Hey, what's up, y'all? I look on the outside like I feel on the inside. I, uh, it's hitting 7 o'clock in the morning. I just did yet another all-nighter uh, for a macroeconomics class. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get right to it with another impression video. So... Why do I have to address this again? I've already addressed it you know, now and then, long in the past. But there have been so many comments and so many views, I can't deny it, that it's just got to be addressed again. Now this, a huge amount of people who posted are so, so fucking ignorant. But I, I love anyone who has the time to take a look at my video videos regarding immigration, which, you know, weren't too well put together I'll admit but I don't put a script together before most of my uh, videos I, I feel I have the ability to communicate by voice you know tell me if I'm wrong but you'll find that people on either side of the debate tend to hate me now this is for the fact that I take what I believe now uh, what I agree with because what I believe is always changing and I move on from my subject that is to say Everything has its pros and cons. I don't think there is anything which is entirely black and white. And both sides want to say that the other side is just seen in all black and white. But the fact that there are even sides just, it, it, it completely takes away from that. They're sides. They're directly opposing. So they're always going to be dividing, moving further apart. That's what makes you a better liberal or better conservative is being more against the other, you know, moving further away from that middle path. So why would you want to be moderate? But the fact is the majority of the world is moderate. The problem is the people who are immoderate tend to be really loud about it and obnoxious. Uh, and granted, I'm going to put it out right now. I do find that uh, the conservative side of the debate tends to be a lot louder and more obnoxious. Or to, to phrase it differently more effectively uh, vocal <laughs> about their views. So, what, and just in general, though, I'm not going to base that strictly to the conservatives, not in any fashion. Uh, the, the fundamentalists, the wackos in any situation uh, tend to be the loudest, tend to be able to get their voice out there. They're more desperate to get their voice out there because we, we moderate, we relaxed people, we just... We sort of go with the flow, we, we go with the benefit, of, uh, or uh, rather, uh, we give life the benefit of the doubt, the population. We give the population the benefit of the doubt, and we believe that, uh, you know, generally people who aren't completely out of their fucking minds, uh, you know, conspiracy theorists and all this bullshit are on either side. But uh, we also hope that the general population recognizes propaganda for propaganda. Uh, and you do see that happening today, advertising is changing to where uh, it, it's being catered to a self-aware consumer. Uh, someone who's so used to the old tricks that ads have that they, they need new scenarios that will tweak your mind and go, you know, make you sort of laugh at yourself and ads that are, that make fun of themselves. So you would assume that the same people that these ads are targeting, uh, you know, constitute the general populace, but that's, that doesn't seem to be the fact because we have political propaganda going out on the internet, not even professional anymore, just propaganda by people. And maybe that's what makes us believe it. Uh, there's a scary new internet and it, it can propose ideas within minutes. Well, within moments, really. And, uh, for some reason, we're more inclined to, well, I guess it's a sign of the times that we're more inclined to believe some random person on the internet, uh, completely faceless and with no real, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for, no real ability to keep tabs on this person. They trust that person more than they do a politician or a lobbyist or spokesperson. And 
I, I guess that really just shows how far those people, those figureheads in our community, have eroded our trust. And yet still we manage to come together and act as if we're standing in unison against, uh, for or against a cause when we support a politician. When you support a politician, you're supporting a head. And that head will do anything to get ahead. So don't don't think that you're supporting an ideology. And I, I'm sorry, I, I enjoy the Ron Paul campaign. Uh, I find it um, invigorating and somewhat refreshing. But Ron Paul is just a politician like any other politician. And uh, a lot of upset liberals discovered that Obama is just like any other politician. And, uh, you know, I... I uh, I liked Obama going into the race because I saw through all the bullshit. I decided to read his books. I wanted to know the facts. And, uh, you know, I'm disappointed in him. And what can you expect? He's a politician. Politicians' jobs are to disappoint the general populace. I don't think there's uh, any way we could agree with all their decisions. But in any case, to the fact of immigration... I have seen a lot of people turning against the, those people who are against amnesty. Now look at me. I've been yelled at so fucking much by conservatives who don't even bother to understand my viewpoint. But <laughs> I'm against amnesty. I'm not pro-amnesty. I used to be pro-amnesty, but I've, it's been several years. I developed a more matured aspect to it. A no black and white perspective to it, uh, a spot with grays and in betweens. Um, it's odd that I should have such a perception for these shades, seeing as I'm colorblind. But hell, there there are in betweens in this debate. It's not either a Im illegal immigrants are this oppressed lower class, or b they are evil parasites who've come to prey on our jobs take away from our freedom, kill and rape our children. We leave that to the gay people. That's a joke. Anyway, that was dark. Anyway, uh, really, the, the general populace, as far as Mexican-Americans, is not hostile uh, to the average American, and to what degree they are hostile to the average American is developed from hostility from us if you really are opposed to hostility and uh, immigrants then i sincerely suggest that you don't take a personal hostility a xenophobia against those people or you will get the same in return that just seems like a logical expectation in any case they are also not ours to protect i you know Sorry, but we have to cut the cord there. Yes, they have multiple rights to our land, but who really has rights to, to land? Uh, this is a world in which force is king, okay? And the, the land was taken from the natives. You're not even bothering to fight for the natives anymore on this notice. And, I mean, the Mexicans, the, the, the Spanish at the time, came in and took it from the Indians, and then we took it from them. So... Now, you're going to try and say that they still have a right to the territory? No one has a right to any territory. Sorry, but I believe in the Bible, and all this land is God's land, and it's no one else's. What we claim, these boundaries we put up, they're transcended by Jesus Christ. Not trying to... <coughs> not trying to get all speechy on you or anything. But, uh... Where am I going with this? Sorry, that's um, the other side. And now we go to the reality. There we go. The reality of the matter. The reality of the matter is, if you were worried about legal immigration, which I am, because our country needs jobs, our economy, we aren't in desperate times. This is called the business cycle. This happens. You know, economic fluctuations, it's part of the cycle. You know how forests need to be burned down often to be regrown greater than before with a whole new source of, uh, of uh, surface nutrition? Well, that's how an economy works. It doesn't have to be burnt to the ground. The, 
we go up, contraction, we go up again. So we're just finding our way into that up. And sorry, but the job losses have stopped. The little, the downward thing has stopped. Right now we're deadlining. Deadlining is a good thing when you're going from downhill. So anyway, I am still worried about jobs. I'm a social entrepreneur. Of course I'm worried about jobs. I want us all to be employed and happy. So if you're worried about illegal immigration, number one, the greatest source of job loss, outsourcing. And so many of the same politicians who claim to take this social stance against immigration promote outsourcing, uh, freedom of enterprise. It, and, ooh, ooh, are you going to try and catch me on that one and call me a communist? No, I support free enterprise. But why it, we're, we're trying to support tax cuts to people who over the past eight years, and, and this is in practice, we have record of this. Don't try to fuck with me on this. Over the past eight years, when we gave the rich their tax cuts and the expectation that they would invest in the United States, they took the money. And where did they invest? China. What fucking good does it do us to invest in China? That, that doesn't help our economy at all. The freedom of enterprise is... Everything has its boundaries, and... The freedom of enterprise has to have its boundaries. We will not pay for uh, people to benefit from sweatshop labor over in China. And being angry, this is very important, being angry at Mexicans, just as an example, but illegal immigrants for taking your jobs is just as ridiculous, equally as ridiculous as being angry at someone over in China or India or Singapore for taking your job. They're in a sweatshop a million miles away. Somehow, to, to these people, it makes less sense. But consider that. There's a much more serious threat to our uh, economy from outsourcing. We lose many, many more jobs from outsourcing every year than we do from illegal immigration. The majority of illegal immigration jobs are the jobs that we're trying to move beyond. The jobs that you would have taken you know, while working yourself through college, like I am right now, and you don't see me complaining. I'm working as hard as I can, okay? Oh. Anyway. No. Illegal immigration should be worked against, definitely. But this social stance against illegal immigrants, as if, as if there's something wrong with them, listen, that's capitalism. It's called the profit incentive. The, uh, the These are people who come from obviously very dire backgrounds in Mexico. I've lived there. I've seen how they, you know, how they live. It's not the best. And in some parts, especially far south Mexico, it's pretty much unlivable in a lot of parts. So in, in this case, if you want to talk about a victim scenario, yes, they're a victim. But they're a victim of a different government and a different, you know, it, it has nothing to do with race. They're, they're just happen to be in a tough situation so their incentive is to feed their families which i think is understandable and so they go through humongous trials to come into this country to the united states and uh while i don't support that they don't first off they don't understand even why it's illegal that they don't understand the economic results from that the the second thing is that these people, why would they care about that? Do you think that someone who can't put food on their table is going to go, hmm, wait a second, we could damage that foreign economy, and we have to have, you know, good social ethics. So uh, what can we do here? Uh, get on a boat and go to the United Kingdom? It, you know, the logic here doesn't work. Anyway, now that I've devastated either side, you guys come back at me. I seriously promote intellectual debate on here. I want to hear from either side. I want to know what people have to say, but I want to hear something interesting. I don't want to hear a talking points memo. I can turn on Fox or MSNBC when I want to be preached to about what I'm supposed to think.